All right, so this is my Amiga 4000, and I'm gonna start putting it back together. That's what my ghetto fan mod looks like. It's just a little long. Then we blinged out the 3640, because why not? I have the 3.1.4 ROMs installed in here. I have to put my GoTech back in down low here. So this is a FB357 Alpha. And I cut my GoTex lip out here on the 4000. Just, just shaved off a tick. Why did I do that? Because on the lip of the 4000's case that has no cooling, when you put this in, it just doesn't have enough room. But if you cut that edge out, it gives it enough to fit over this lip here, this lip right here on the inside. So that way, when you put your GoTex in, it's not sitting high. It goes over the case. And it's the perfect height for the other 3.5-inch drive to fit on top of it. So this is from, uh, yeah, Jonathan. Jonathan, thank you. I reached out, I got a nice letter inside that the X-Acto knife cut, and what it was, was this. One of these 90s CD-ROM audio cables. He wrote me a nice letter, and it said, one second here, gotta kinda, and there we go. Hi Chris, as promised, please find enclosed one CD DVD audio cable for your Amiga 4000 setup. I use these myself for Amiga product projects when adding CD or DVD drives to 600, 1200, or 4000. Simple, blah, 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 blah. Always enjoy your freebie for me. P.S. Keep up the YouTube videos as I'm learning quite a bit of them, especially your Mode Pro. I uh, hadn't had a clue that that even existed. As an idea for future episodes, if you use it, why not do a tutorial on That's if you use it in one of your rigs, and I do. So, Jonathan, thank you for that. I greatly appreciate it. And we're gonna put that mofo in right now. And I'm sorry it took me so long. I had Amiga 4000 repair of death. On these turds, you have this digital side here and the doohicular where you can plug in the digital, which is usually your And we're gonna do this one. Over here in Audio Land, Right here, you got these three pins. The pin on the left is going to be the, le uh, yeah, pin one here is going to be the left. Pin one is defined by the little notch on the motherboard. It's got a little, little arrow and a plus, I believe. Um, that's for this cat. But this is your left audio. The middle is ground, and the right is going to be uh, right. Pin three is right. So these are a little different because these are meant for... PCs, but they have four slots and we can just use three. So what I'm going to do is make sure that I am white left, uh, black ground, and red right. I just need to move this one over and that's where these little pin things come in handy. You can depress on these and pull one out if I don't stab myself in the finger and it'll come right out and then I need to move it over one and click it back in but a lot of times it won't stick because I screw and push it up too far so I'm going to take this again and lift that tab back up just to give her some grip when you push the connector back in and then we just plug it in and watch Commodore pins will be too fat no, there we go. so that's the audio in to the motherboard and we're going to go in that little hole right here. So we're going to go under the daughter card, daughter board. Just fish all this through. Get on over there. Make sure I don't hit any chips. And then just hang this sucker like that. So that way we're in, we're all plugged up, everything's good, she's down, good to go. Now i got to mount all this crap again. All right, so we're plugged in. Now I'm going to tuck this back because I have a fan on the 3640. And I need some kind of air. It's not too bad. Check it out. So you can see the fan 3640 right here. I kind of just take the pickles here and just 
do what I can to keep them under control. I got this extra two Molexes. What are they for? Well, I got myself another short cable here. Okay, so it blows down. The idea what I do is I take this fan and I just kind of squish it in between this rail and this to cool the 3640 chips because they cook. Shove it in here. Now what I have to do because I am precise on measurements. I just loosen this up a little bit and make it crooked. Vampire 1200 orders in. Yay. Just what I need. Something else. Nope. Nope. Okay. So there you can see the GoTech fits nice. She got a little scuffed up, I'd say. I'm going to go ahead and plop a disc in. Because if I don't, it doesn't work. We're going to bust out the Luke Skywalker here. Take some temperatures of the 3640. We are rocking at 77.7 degrees Fahrenheit is a cool 75 degrees. Now you're wondering, what the hell's going on? Where's workbench? How come I don't see anything? It's coming. It just takes its time because of the video card. It boots slower with the GVP card in there. I don't know why. Here it comes. So we're in poo-poo resolution, and this looks turds. Why? Because it's in 15 kilohertz mode. 256 color. I mean, that's fine. It's okay. But I want better. Don't you want better? So what we're going to do is we're going to go into system prefs. Now this is OS 3.9. Just the base install. Screen mode. And now you're going to see I have all these resolutions. So we're going to turn this sucker up to spectrum. We're going to do 800 by 600 16 bit. Just for now. I'm not even going to test it because I know it works. I'm going to say save. And then she'll flip. I'll get all my chip RAM back. And I'm in a crystal clear resolution. Poof. That's purtier, much purtier, and it's clear, 31 kilohertz, and you're like, that's awesome. What if you run a 15 kilohertz program? Run me to E, directory works, she'll flip, black the screen, and then we're in 15 kilohertz off the pass-through cable. Isn't that cool or what? Why did I have Mode Pro turned on? Because I got that white VGA monitor that I painted to be a Commodore monitor, and, uh, it's only 31, so I mode pro a lot of stuff so I can run everything I need to with whatever. And I don't know what these hard drives are called. Uh, let's see, 27 gigger. Nothing on there. So, and then when I quit the 15 kilohertz program, you go back and you are back to whatever you were in. So now, whenever I take this apart, it's always some kind of mission, getting everything torqued back together. I'm sure your Amigas are the same. What is it? Play CD, uh, press play, there we go, sounds great, so CD audio works natively out of the Amiga, and we have, oh, there's the backdrop, finally loading, and we have uh, Callmaster, John, thank you for that, I appreciate it greatly, you just made this even better. <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to listen to some Christian music. Thank you all for watching. I do promise I'll get this lid back on. We'll get her shoved over back in her spot, and I will get this whole area cleaned up before I make a mess again. As always, thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something.